As we mentioned in the previous video, most of science involves getting around the two big problems with being a scientist. One, they are physically human, and most of the universe is invisible because it's too fast, too slow, too big, or too small for humans to see. And two, scientists have human brains, which are inherently biased and need thinking tools to think straight. The scientists aboard this large scientific vessel called the NOR are investigating how tiny phytoplankton get infected by even tinier viruses in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And for that, they are using an important scientific tool to help them see what they can't see. A lot of times, scientists can't actually observe the things they want to observe because they are impossible for humans to actually see. For example, we can't travel thousands of light years to look at other planets, and we can't go back in time and observe dinosaur behavior. Instead, we can look for things we can observe that tell us about the thing we can't. This is called a proxy. For instance, light fluctuations from stars tell us there are orbiting planets that we can't see. The light is acting as a proxy for the planets. On the N.A. Weiss expedition, scientists are investigating an infection process between two microscopic organisms. The host is a phytoplankton called Emiliania huxleyi, or Ehux, which is 1 300th the width of a human penny, and it gets infected by an even smaller virus. The process of infection between host and viral attacker involves complex chemical interactions that happen within the cells, which are themselves a fraction of a millimeter, which means pretty much invisible, especially if you're bobbing around on a boat in the middle of the Atlantic. Here's where proxies are key. Some proxies make it easier to identify the existence of other things that are hard to see. Back on shore in the lab, it was figured out that different phytoplankton use different chemicals for things like pigments. This is helpful at sea because instead of looking through a microscope and trying to identify each specific species of phytoplankton, which is unnecessarily time-consuming, a much easier and more effective method is using these pigments as proxies. Every class of phytoplankton has a specific suite of pigments. So these pigments act as proxies to tell us who's out there. And so when you look out at the water, right, you can't tell because these organisms are only microns in diameter. So we, we use these chemical signals or these, or these pigments to tell us um, exactly the type of phytoplankton species that are out there. Chemical proxies also help researchers understand how EHUX and its viruses are fighting it out on a cellular level. Because during this battle, chemicals get produced at various stages. Directly observing an actual infection play out in the open ocean is impossible. Again, because we're talking about the inner workings of a cell in a huge ocean. But we can look for chemicals as clues or tracers. What we've discovered is that there's a specific class of lipids, glycosphingolipids, that are specifically derived from the activity of the virus. When the virus is infecting this, these coccolithophores, we detect that specific structure of the glycosphingolipid. So when we detect that glycosphingolipid, we know that it's a proxy for infection. And here's why these field trips are so important. The ocean is far more complex than a lab environment, so another important part of the expedition is confirming that these chemical proxies truly work in both places. A lot of times what we find in the lab doesn't really relate well to the ocean because a lot of the organisms we grow in the lab are not the same as those in the ocean. In fact, it's 99% uh, of the microbes in the ocean are not cultural. We, have, we don't have them in culture. So far, we've just looked at chemical proxies, but there's another new type of proxy that's being explored and tested on this expedition, and that's an optical one. It turns out that a virus infection impacts EHUX's cellular characteristics in such a way that it affects how light interacts with the water by scattering light, enhancing turbidity, absorbing different wavelengths, or emitting light via fluorescence. This means that light can be a proxy for infection. The big advantage to this proxy is that it can be done with robots that constantly swim around in the ocean. This way, the proxy can be measured more frequently and directly in the original environment, both of which are not possible with chemical proxies that require getting discrete water samples and bringing them on board for extensive processing. So using optical instruments on autonomous platforms is very beneficial because it gives us uh, an incredible resolution of sampling that we couldn't obtain before, uh, both temporally uh, and spatially and then also we're just able to 
uh, have many samples before we're actually occupying a location and samples after we're occupying a location. Uh, so we're able to bring a whole new context to a system that we weren't able to have uh, before the optics were used. By using multiple proxies that look at the same thing, in this case, virus infection of a globally important phytoplankton, scientists are in effect looking at something from different angles, which gives them a more accurate and balanced view of the big picture. It also means that if these independent proxies point to the same conclusion, you know your conclusion is on the right track. At the heart of it, scientists are trying to answer questions about the world using things they can measure. A world that is complex and contains many aspects that are invisible to the naked eye or may have happened in the past. Proxies are such an important part of doing science because they allow scientists to see parts of the world that they can't directly observe. And that allows scientists to answer questions that would otherwise be unanswerable. If you like the tools of science, please subscribe. And if you want to learn about more tools, click next video.